Hi, this is Martin O'Hanlon from StuffAboutCode.com and co-author of Adventures in Minecraft. Um, so, one of the questions I get asked quite a lot is, um, you know, when I'm using the Minecraft API, how do I find out where which, where the player's looking? How do I know which direction they're looking in? Um, and unfortunately, it's kind of one of those things where I've just had to say, do you know what, you can't do that. Um, and actually, on the Pi the uh, Minecraft Pi edition, which is where the API started, uh, you, you can't do that. But one of the things, the things I thought might, might might be quite useful was to add that to Raspberry Juice, um, so that you can, if you're kind of running a, a Minecraft server with Raspberry Juice plugin and the kind of full version of um, Minecraft. So that's what I've done. I've added a couple of new functions to the Raspberry Juice API to allow you to find out where the player is looking. So let's just have a quick look at look at some code and see how it works. So if we look at this kind of uh, this program here, you'll see that I'm importing the Minecraft module as normal. I'm making a connection, um, and then I've got this new method called player.getRotation, which returns the angle that the uh, player is looking at. Uh, and then I've also got pitch, which is the angle that the player is looking up and down. And if we kind of just give that program a run, what you'll see is okay. Well, at the moment I'm kind of looking at naught degrees forward which means I'm looking kind of straight ahead and uh, kind of 0 0.5 degrees pitch so let's just kind of change that so I'm looking up in the air and give that program a run again and you know so 57 degrees and minus 33 degrees pitch and if I just um, put a loop around this program you'll see what I mean So as you can see, as I as I move the direction the player is looking to, I get a different angle between kind of naught and 360, and minus 90 pitch and 90 pitch all the way down. Now that's kind of useful, uh, but I've also added another function called uh, get direction. So if I just stop our program running. And what I want to do is I want to kind of show you the difference. And kind of get direction is in some respects a little bit more useful. Because what direction returns, get direction returns, is a unit vector um, which contains an x, y and z of the direction that the player is looking. And you might be thinking, okay, well, all right, Mark, what do you what do you mean a directional vector? Uh, yeah, I, I must admit it's not the easiest of language to understand, but hopefully you'll see what I mean. So what I've done is I've just changed that program to uh, get the direction and then post to chat the x, y, and z that we get back from this get direction call. Okay. Now what you see is kind of three numbers that represent the x, the y, and the z. And as you can kind of see, as I move around, we can kind of see those values move. And what they represent is where I am looking within the planes of x, y, and z. So at the moment, I'm just trying to get it about as close to naught on x as I can. Um, so that what that means is is that I'm basically facing uh, forward one in Z, yeah, which means that I'm basically f following um, facing forward. And as I kind of move forward, you can kind of see how that works. And as I move around, you'll see that you know the X will change to kind of minus numbers as I kind of move around. And the Z does the same, and the kind of Y goes all the way from kind of 1 at the top all the way down to kind of minus 1 at the bottom. Now the reason that that's useful is you can use those numbers to um, find out coordinates that are around your player, particularly find out the coordinates that are in front of your player. So I've got a quick program that I want to show you. Let's just stop that program running for a second. And here's the next program I want to show you. Now it's called block in front. And what block in front does is puts a block always in front of the player. 
So let's just kind of talk through how, how that does. We've got the same um, Minecraft modules, both Minecraft and Block. We're also going to be using time to put some of the delays in. Now, I've just created a constant called Block Distance, which is the number of blocks in front of me I want my block to appear. Uh, I've created my connection to Minecraft. And that'll loop forever. Now, the first thing I do is I get the position of my player. And then what I do is I get the direction of my player. So every time I go around this loop, I find out where the player is and I find out where they're looking. And then what I do is I'm going to calculate the position of the block in front of the player. And the way I do that is to say, okay, well, if I take the position of the player, yeah, and then I take the direction that they're, that they're looking and times that by how far ahead I want the block to be. Now, there's an interesting point. If you wanted the block to be behind, you could just use a minus number and it would take away that value. Um, and I do that for both X, Y, and Z. Now, these are, this calculation here is going to deliver me a very kind of precise number, you know, kind of 4.973281. So I need to round that, um, which is why I'm using the round function. And another thing about that I'm doing is I'm also adding 1 to Y. Now, the reason I'm adding 1 to Y is, is that when I ask Minecraft for Steve's position, for the player's position, it actually gives me the position uh, of where he's standing. And actually, if I want to block in front of Steve, I don't want to block in front of his feet. I want to kind of block in front of the middle of him, which is why I'm adding 1 to Y. Uh, and then I'd so calculate an X, a Y, and a Z. And then what I do is I use those values to create a diamond block in front of Steve. I wait for a bit. I then turn it back to air. And then I just do the same thing over and over again. So what we should see when we run this program is a diamond block that's always where Steve's looking. Well, apart from sometimes it's under the ground. Which is why the get direction call, while it looks quite complicated in terms of the data it returns, is actually more useful because it allows you to do calculations to say, okay, well, you know, I know where um, Steve is. I know the direction he's looking. I can then use those two values to do some to do something new, either in front of Steve by adding the value to it, or behind Steve by taking a value away, or even from to the left or to the right by either um, changing the x or the z. So anyway, I hope that makes sense. There's uh, some more information on my blog, stuffaboutcode.com. And if you want to try the new version of Ras Raspberry Juice uh, and you're a, a, a reader of Adventures in Minecraft, you'll find that there's a new starter kit uh, on, on the website as well.